Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for the past couple weeks, I've had a lot of patients come in with the quote unquote diagnosis of alcohol overdose. Um, managing each of these patients was different based on their past medical history, um, whether or not they were a chronic alcoholic, or if there was any conflicting drug use. So for this week's video, I want to talk about the clinical manifestations of alcohol overdose and possible treatment options in the emergency department. So let's get started. Acute alcohol intoxication usually occurs with binge drinking, and that is generally defined as greater than five drinks in one sitting. But this can obviously vary based on the patient's weight, genetics, muscle mass, or the patient's tolerance. And I think we can all recognize when someone is acutely intoxicated, but some patients do appear normal, especially if they are chronic alcoholics. In terms of vital signs of these patients, hypotension with associated tachycardia can be seen with ethanol-induced vasodilation. Metabolic derangements of hypoglycemia, hypokalemia, hypomagnesia, and hypocalcemia can also be seen, all of which can cause weird arrhythmias. So it's always good to get a BNP on these patients to check those electrolytes out, get a point-of-care glucose, and then definitely get a urine drug screen to see if there is any conflicting drug use with the patient. Furthermore, I always order continuous cardiac and O2 monitoring with my acute alcohol patients. With the risk of electrolyte abnormalities in these patients, I always like to look at their rate and rhythm. And these patients are at risk for respiratory depression from the downer effects of alcohol, so monitoring their O2 sats is very important. And then I like to grab a blood alcohol level from these patients just to monitor their clearance from there on out. Normal patients, aka not chronic alcohol abusers, clear alcohol from their system at a rate of 15 to 20 milligrams per deciliter. Alcohol abusers can do 25 to 35 milligrams per deciliter and sometimes even more per hour. Gone are the days of gastric lavage and activated charcoal. These measures are generally not helpful since alcohol is absorbed by the GI tract so rapidly. I usually give my patients two bags of fluids back to back and Zofran as needed for nausea. But be careful with Zofran and QT prolongation since some of these patients have electrolyte abnormalities. The treatment becomes a little more difficult when a chronic alcohol abuser comes in with altered mental status or even comatose. At that point, you're really worried about Wernicke's encephalopathy or hepatic encephalopathy. Wernicke's encephalopathy is thiamine deficiency, and they will present with a bunch of different symptoms, but the hallmark is ophthalmoplegia. Hepatic encephalopathy has many symptoms as well, but I like to think of this as they might have asterixis. Asterixis is a phenomenon that's notoriously seen with cirrhosis or liver failure, but it's also seen with kidney failure that has high uremic levels or even opioid overdose. To test this, you take the patient's hand, tell them to hold it out, and you push their hand in extension and tell them to hold their hand there. From there, you will see them flapping their hand down due to the brief relaxation of the extensory muscles of the wrist. When you suspect hepatic encephalopathy in a patient, high ammonia levels are the problem here. Lactulose and the antibiotics of neomycin or rifaximine are usually the first-line treatment options. Lactulose is non-absorbable in the gut, and the bacteria in the gut convert lactulose into lactic acid, then pulling ammonia into the gut for excretion. Neomycin and rifaximine are antibiotics that decrease ammonia-producing flora in the gut. When you suspect Wernicke's encephalopathy, low thiamine levels are the problem here. So the first line treatment options are thiamine 100 mg first and then give dextrose. Thiamine helps brain cells produce energy from sugar. Then these patients need to be admitted for continued care and monitoring. So in conclusion, when a patient comes in with acute alcohol consumption, they could have the vital signs of hypotension and tachycardia, which is from the ethanol induced vasodilation. They could also have electrolyte abnormalities or a low glucose. So get a born care glucose when they come in and make sure you get a BNP to look for any electrolyte abnormalities. Then I always get a urine drug screen and a blood alcohol level to continually monitor these patients from there on out. In terms of treatment, I always start off with two bags of fluids back to back for these patients and I always give them Zofran as needed for nausea. And then obviously correct any glucose abnormalities or electrolyte abnormalities that you get back from the lab. 
If the patient comes in with altered mental status or comatose, then you need to figure out what type of encephalopathy they may be having. Remember, Wernicke's encephalopathy will have ophthalmoplegia, and hepatic encephalopathy might have the asterixis hand flapping that we talked about earlier. If they have Wernicke's encephalopathy, give them thiamine and then give them dextrose. And if they have hepatic encephalopathy, you need to give them lactulose and the antibiotics of neomycin or rifaximine. Now, the treatment can become tough when a chronic alcoholic comes in with an acute alcohol intoxication. So as you sober these patients up, they might go through withdrawal symptoms. And treating those withdrawal symptoms is what I want to talk about next week. So see you then. Mm -hmm.